listening to the Not So Christian in Me Show, starring Southern Girl. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Not So Christian in Me Show. I'm your host and CEO, Southern Girl Denise, and today we have another hit show. We're talking lights, camera, action with today's guest. Without further ado, please help me welcome Bel Air TV actor and health advocate, Brooklyn McLean, to the National Christian Me Show. Woo, woo, woo. I'm your cheerleader. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Yay. Thank you so much for being our special guest. No problem. Thanks for having me. I still, so I how still are you? Get, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm still tripping off the time to the show. Y'all, it, it gives me a little chuckle. Um, I'm oh, good. okay. Doing? I'm doing pretty good. Now, for those who don't know, I actually got a chance to meet Brooklyn this weekend at the BET, the BET weekend at the House of BET. So tell us a little bit about your experience being there and um, who were you excited to see while you were there? Um, the BET experience. Uh, I had a blast. Um, yeah. I went primarily just because I don't really go out that much. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I had a, a day off from taking care of my son. And I just wanted to go just be out, you know, I'm getting right. a lot of positive feedback from the show. And uh, you just want to go out there and kind of just be amongst the people so they can put a, a face to the to the character and, you know, just kind of take right. in the whole experience. So we did like a Puma gifting suite on Thursday and then came out to the uh, the Saturday event and had a, a brunch, <laughs> which wasn't much I know. Of a brunch. <laughs> supported some vendors, you know, bought some T-shirts, yeah. took some pictures, uh, ran into some old friends and, uh, you know, just listened to the music and just it was a great day. The sun was out and just kind of chilling. Yeah, it was beautiful, beautiful day. Because uh, out here in Houston, it's not so beautiful. It's beautiful, but it's hot. So being okay. in L.A. Okay. with the beautiful weather, the wind blowing, the sun shining, it was it was a nice breeze. I enjoyed that yeah. breeze <laughs> while yeah. I was there. Yeah. I hated to come back to the Texas heat, but it is what it is at this point. I'm make the best out of it and stay cool as much as I can. That's right. So tell That's us right. a little bit about your character in um, your, your character in um, Bel Air. Bel Air. Mm -hmm. uh, so my character's name is is Doc Hightower, and he mm -hmm. is a former um, athlete, former professional basketball player who suffered an injury. So now he pretty much devotes his time to mentoring and coaching uh, youth in basketball. So he has an a AU program called Zenith Height. Mm -hmm. And uh, Will Smith, the, the lead character on the show that's played by Jabari Banks, um, gets kicked out of school for protesting some injustices at Bel Air uh, Prep. And so he hears about my team and still wants to play basketball, still have a shot at playing Division One college basketball. So we meet up. You know, I put him through some hoops. He makes the team. And uh, but I have um, some great areas of how I do business. Um, some okay. might think it's shady, but he's really just robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, so in the business of AU in real life, a lot of these coaches are taking money to direct players to certain colleges or certain agents or getting mm -hmm. a percentage of. NIL deals, name and likeness deals, which, you know, the kids are being able to get paid now before they actually turn professional. So my character didn't appreciate that all these corporations and businesses were taking advantage of these kids. And he's like, hey, I think there's a lane for me. Like, I can make money and I can take from these corporate people and give back to these kids in a different way. So if a kid needs a pair of shoes, or his dad lost his job, you know, I can give them some money or 
mom got some hospital problems, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't come out and tell people that. So on the surface, it looks like I'm doing some type of mischievous double dealing. But once you watch yeah. the show and, and take in each episode, you see that, you know, Doc is really on the up and up and uh, just getting a bad rap of what he's trying to do. Okay. Now, how did you land that role? Uh, I mean, just auditioning like any other, you mm -hmm. know, I'm not at the level where they offering me stuff. You know what I mean? So I got to put yeah. my name in the hat just like everybody else and do the best I can right. do. And fortunately, this one came out uh, in my favor. Well, that's good. How has this journey been for you? Of just acting or? Um, being on Bel Air. How has that been? Uh, like it's being been a part blessing. of the um, Yeah, it's been a real blessing. I, I've been dealing with uh, some health problems the last six, seven years, you know, um, mm -hmm. suffering from some heart disease that runs in my family. And, wow. you know, it caught up to me. And um, so I experienced a couple of heart attacks. I had a, a couple of wow. open heart surgeries just trying to repair it. Um, and then I had a an uh, uh, episode that put me in the hospital during the pandemic in October mm. 2020, which led me to needing a heart transplant. So they wow. actually had to take my heart out and give me a new one in January 2021. So, wow. Um, I and don't look all, at all, to see. Is, yeah, I can't. By looking at yeah. you, I would never, I would have never yeah. known that. So, wow. You Where know, do you get your strength from? For me. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So for me, and I, I hear there's a delay, but just as for me, um, you know, what the what I learned from the experience was because I actually flatlined on the way to the hospital on this last episode before, um, I actually felt like I was dying. And it didn't hurt, it just felt like I was sleepy. So I was thinking I could just go to sleep and be done. Like, don't have to deal with my heart problems no more and come to find out, you know, I did lose consciousness. I did die. You know what I mean? And they paddled me with the electric shock to bring me back. And so once I was told that, cause I didn't know that at the time, the paramedic told me after the fact, like, you know, basically you flatlined, man, like we had to bring you back. So for me, not that I, you know, I've always believed God existed or a higher power mm -hmm. existed, but for me, it was like, there's no doubt, you know what I mean? Like I'm supposed to be dead right now and I'm not. Yeah. So for me, it was just like, okay, I'm still here clearly to be doing something. And mm -hmm. I need to allow my steps to be divinely led for the rest of my life. Like, there's no more, I got this right now. You know what I mean? It's like, nah, God, you tell me where to go, you know, what to say, who to say it to, you know, cause I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to do what Brooklyn wants to do no more. So, um, I expressed some desires and, uh, you know, God was like, all right, I got you. You know what I mean? So when I needed health insurance, because I hadn't been working as an actor for a year or so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I found some work to be able to get my insurance back through acting. And then here comes Bel Air. And, uh, you know, so the God's timing is just like, you know, it's a head scratcher, but for me at this point, it, everything makes total sense. Like I don't debate nothing. I don't discuss nothing. It's just when it happens is when exactly what it's supposed to happen. And my job is just not to get in the way. Absolutely, man. That's, that took me back right there. Like <laughs> you, you, you're more grateful now. I'm, I should say like, I, I would say this, mm -hmm. I would say this because I was, I would consider myself one of the most appreciative and grateful people already right and then something like this happens and what it taught me was there's levels to gratitude hmm. there's levels to appreciation yeah. so as grateful as, as denise is right now mm -hmm. something could happen and you could be even more grateful that you didn't even know it was possible sure. but it doesn't take away from the fact that you're very grateful right now like for everything you have for all of God is, is, is blessed you with, you're like, I'm grateful. And then, you know, break your toe. Yes. And now every time you take a step, it hurts. And you like, mm -hmm. man, I, I didn't appreciate my toe that much. Now when it feels better, I'm a pretty, you know what I mean? But it, like, it takes things to happen 
for us to recognize that, oh, there's levels to everything. And I'm okay with that. So it's, it's not a situation where I could just wake up and say, I'm grateful and I'm good and I'm covered. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you're grateful for where you are. And then as soon as something happens that doesn't go your way and then it's corrected, you realize you could be more grateful than, than you are right now. Absolutely. So when did you start your your um, your organization, the What the Heart Wants Wellness organization? When did you start that? Um, I started that uh, with my publicist, um, Barry Dynamic PR, shout out. Um, we met through a mutual friend and that friend suggested that I start a foundation and that she would be the perfect person to help okay. guide me in getting it going. So basically it's, it's new um, and I'm just, once again, like, I know the things that I want to do, but I'm also open to being led, which is what we just talked about a few minutes ago. So when the idea was brought up, it never crossed my mind to start a foundation. But I was like, oh, that sounds good. I don't know how to do it, but that sounds like something that God would want me to do. And then here comes Barry. And with all her information, she's like, all right, I'll show you how to do it. So it's like for me, it's just being an open vessel that even though I don't know how to do it, Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm supposed to do it. So I'm just going to go learn about it. You know what I mean? So I just know that, you know, health, men's health primarily um, is an underserved discussion in our community. Men, we don't go to the Mm -hmm. hospital. You know, we fight through everything just because we don't want to come off as weak or, you know, emotional about something that's going on with us. But it's like, we carrying all that stress and anxiety. It's like that stuff affects our organs. And it's like when we not get checked out, we not finding out mm-hmm. if something's wrong because we just motor through. So I didn't know I had a problem right. until I had a problem. You know, I was in the best shape, playing basketball, running all day, working, just having a blast, and then heart attack. It's like, oh, I have a problem. But if I'd have been getting my physicals, you know, I felt I good, but I wasn't going to the doctor regularly, you know, because I thought I was all right. It's like, no, we don't know right. clearly what's going on inside at any given point. So it's like going to the doctor, you know, I was always a healthy eater. I didn't drink. I don't abuse my body. But it was like being in that kind of condition is what kept me alive through the first heart attack because I was supposed to die from that, you know. So, yeah, the foundation just kind of stresses education information um you know bringing trying to bring awareness to awareness. preventable diseases you know what i mean mm-hmm. um because a lot of the stuff that we're dying from is preventable we just don't have the information absolutely and that's so very important in the black community especially the males because like you say they don't like going to the doctor and a lot of males you know unfortunately they end up you know dying early because they didn't get a chance to go to the doctor to get themselves checked out to you know before something like that happened so i commend you for that um now you say that it now you say heart disease running your family um yeah how has your organization helped your family um well there's really nothing they could do for my here's what's interesting you would think which is amazes me just in my family and as a community you would think that my brothers, I have three older brothers, watched me go through everything I went through, that they would go, you know what, let me go get checked out. Yeah, but they They don't. don't. Sometimes it takes somebody that's not a family member to to talk to them. You know, sometimes people just receive information different from different people. Like the people that they're closer to, they won't receive it. But if a stranger would tell them, like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna go to the doctor. You're right. I need yeah. to go to the doctor. But you've yeah. been like telling them for years yeah. to go to the doctor. So yeah. that's, that's so, just the receiving. Yeah. So, that's, so for me, for my family, I just tried. I mean, for everybody, because everybody is, a, is an extended family. You know what I mean? Like it takes a village. But I just yeah. try to be an example of what I want how to people to receive or behave. Like, you know what I mean? Like. A kid, for example, like kids are horrible listeners, but they're great impersonators. 
They're yes. going to copy That's everything true. that you do. They're not going to listen to nothing you say. Don't do that. Don't do this. Mm -hmm. You know, if we drink it, don't drink. And it's like, oh, okay. And then they're going to go off and do it because they impersonate. So right. my thing is, let me just be an example of what I, I want people to receive. Look, y'all, I had these heart problems. I was in shape, but I, it, it didn't stop me from having a heart attack. But it, it was better mm -hmm. that I was in shape. And now that I have a new heart, I'm still getting back. I'm still in shape. Like, it's still, you know, still take care of yourself in spite of the things that are going to happen to you. You know what I mean? So for me, right. it's just about being an example to my family and to people that I don't know. You know what I mean? So family, family's going to be family. They, you know. <laughs> They're going to do what they're going to do. You know what I mean? They want to so, do anyway. <laughs> That's yeah. across the board for everybody. Yeah. That's good. Whew. So has your, health, has your health hindered you from landing certain roles? Uh, I would say, yeah, but not. When I was healthy enough to work, I worked even after I was having heart problems. But I say it, it hindered in the sense of um, just not being able to audition. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So because I was in the hospital for five months waiting on a transplant, Ooh, you know, so transplant, wow. rehab, I had a stroke during the surgery, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so when I wasn't able to physically work, I just couldn't, you know what I mean? But once I was healthy enough to do it, then um, that's what I would do. That's what I would try to do. So what causes only work a heart attack? Me. Yeah. Um, I would say there's several several symptoms. I didn't experience any symptoms, but shortness of breath is a symptom. Um, lightheadedness is a symptom. Uh, pain in your in your left arm is a symptom. You know, pain. You know that, that I thought was indigestion, but it wasn't. It was like signs of a heart attack. Like it was pain right below my sternum. Um, oh wow you know, a swelling in your ankles, which is called edema. Like there's so many things that could trigger it. Um, but it's like, that's where those physicals come in. You know, even if you feel good, still go get checked out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Have you been on the set and um, had had to leave the set because of your illness? No, fortunately, no. Well, that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you this. When I had that first heart attack in 2016, I, I had just booked Tyler Perry show to have and have nots. So I was mm. in Atlanta and worked that first week, had the weekend off, went home and had the heart attack. So I couldn't go wow. back to the show. I lost the job because I had a heart attack. But I'm just glad I had the heart attack here in Los Angeles and not by myself in Atlanta, Atlanta. You know what I mean? so, absolutely you're close, close to home that's good right. that, that was a good that was definitely a good thing so yeah. let's talk talk more about um um Belair. i know we kind of got got off track but i want to talk more about Belair and in that role um what's your fan are you going to continue that that um that character in the next season i mean that's the word on the street but you know until <laughs> <laughs> You know, until there's a contract in your face with your name about to sign it, then it's just talk at that point. But, you know, there there's a strong possibility the character will be back, which would be awesome. If 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 your character do return, um, what do you want that character to um what what do you want to change in that particular um character? Um I would like to see I would like I would like to show some type of evolution to where his business dealings become above board. So there's just no question, you know, who this guy is. Um, but I, I, I don't want to eliminate completely the drama because that's what makes the character interesting is that you don't really know what he's up to. You know what I mean? So it's like you got to find that that fine balance of yeah. what's he up to and kind of know, you know, what I mean, like it's real tricky, like. Because if you, if you see the people coming, it kind of gets boring. It's like you need some intrigue. You need some, you know, yeah. some, some mystery about the character. So I'm sure the writers and the producers, they'll come up with something interesting. But, you know, as long as I'm back on the show, you know, cash and checks. <laughs> it's all <okay. laughs> Yeah, I know. Huh? 
signing, signing them checks. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So what's um what's next? Like, what are you going to work on? What are you planning on working on next? Um, I mean, like I said, right now, there's the writers are striking. So, so there's not really a whole lot going on. Yeah. Um, the actors yeah. authorized the strike. So they're negotiating right now. But, you know, it's it's a big deal. It's a big time in entertainment because that artificial intelligence sure. and chat GBTs and and the streaming services are really taking a chunk out of people's royalties and residuals and their name and likeness and you know so it's it's important that we that we stand strong and, and get a really good deal between the writers the actors and then we can all get back to work but personally it's just continuing to build the foundation and you know my my greatest job is is taking care of my boy so He's only 16 months, so you know that's just oh, more wow. time him to work. Oh, that's awesome! Congratulations! I know, I know, Thank um, you. he's a lot to you, especially with everything that you've been through. He's he's your why. He's your reason yes. to keep moving forward. Absolutely, absolutely. That's awesome. How how long have you been acting? Ooh, twenty over twenty years. Oh wow! Over twenty wow. years. So a lot that's of commercials. A lot of TV shows, like, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm probably going to be considered, you know, the day that I'm, I'm like, number one on the call sheet, you know, mm -hmm. they're going to be like, who is this guy? Where did he come from? And it's like, nah, I've, I've been doing this for a while. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, just, it just takes that one job or a couple of jobs to pe for people to be able to place a, a face on or a name to the face that they've seen it like oh that oh that dude was on all this other stuff too i just mm -hmm. don't know like, that's true like that's so true like perfect example i'm watching the wire yesterday like some old episodes of the wire and i'm seeing michael b jordan on the wire i'm seeing idris alba on the uh elba on the on the wire i'm seeing I this one lady on that wire. plays <laughs> yeah the, the lady that plays uh on snowfall she plays franklin saint's mom she's on the wire and i was okay. like oh man. wood harris is on the wire like, I'm like <laughs> yeah oh, i remember he was i on forgot there. Yeah. all these people were on this show because now you uh, see them on bigger uh -huh. and better things we You're forget like, hey, the, where did this yeah. person come from you like no they've been doing it for for a long time you know what i mean it's just oh, now wow. we just a lot of people don't work. Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't yeah. realize that they just feel like they just knew on the scene like where this person come from yeah. like no nah, they've been working yeah. they've been crying and you just went you just fell asleep and <laughs> you have to wake up yeah. you know <laughs> that's so yeah. true that's so true so tell us how could we find you on social media social media uh just brooklyn mclynn b-r-o-o-k-l-y-n-m-c-l-i-n-n -N -N, uh on instagram facebook TikTok. you know just brooklyn mclynn i, I don't have nothing catchy for <laughs> for a tag it's just my name <laughs> right do you have any um if someone can give you some i mean if you can give someone some advice what advice would that be uh in what area specifically um it can be both health if they having some health challenges and they trying to accomplish goals in their life and they they just hit a brick wall and they don't know how to get through that wall like what is some okay. advice you can give them or someone that's aspiring to be um a great actor like yourself what advice could you give okay. them? So health wise, I would say one of the, the biggest lessons for me was not allowing my physical condition to affect my mental health. Mm, as, as hard as that is, like even though my body was breaking down, my organs were failing, I was 130 some odd pounds, like you know, I just was like, yo, this is not who I am. This is what my body's going through, but this is not who I am. So I have to yeah. try really hard to focus on who I am and not who my body is right now, because my body's going through something that's going to benefit me down the road. So the heart that mm -hmm. I ultimately got, it took six years of me going through everything else to be ready but because that heart wasn't ready for me when i first started having these problems 
So think about yeah. the, the, the coincidence or the, the intersection of, all right, he's ready for a heart transplant and this person is going to bless him. This is the heart that he needed, but he, it wasn't ready for, you know, God is like, yo, it's not ready yet. I got to get you to this point. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. not allowing my, my physical condition to affect my mental health. Right. And then the second, as far as career wise, business, acting, anything really was some advice that my father gave me and it can be applied to health as well. But he was like, man, it's, it's two reasons why people don't make it. And he was like, either they quit or they die. He said, but if you stay in the mm-hmm. game long enough, you're going to get your turn. But most people give up right. before or they die. So for me, I almost died yeah. before I got a chance to because I wasn't going to quit. And so now that I'm still alive, it's like, oh, now those opportunities that were there at this time are here for me because I was able to, God persevered me through that storm to get to the other side yeah. where the rainbow is and, and enjoy it. You know what I mean? So those two things. Yeah, you nailed it right there, perseverance. And a lot of people, they give up so easily. Because, you know, the world that we're living in, they want everything to be pop popcorn available. Like, yeah. right then yeah. and there, they don't yeah. know how to, like, be patient and go yeah. through the storm. Yeah. And it, it's really unfortunate because statistically, for men at least, I, I can't necessarily speak for women. Uh, but for men, we don't typically hit our financial stride until 45, 55 years old. And that's not what they're, that's not what we're telling our young, young people. We're like, no, right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you, you actually have more time than you think in your twenties. Yeah. We shouldn't be wasting our twenties. We should be preparing and sowing seeds in our twenties and thirties to reap the the harvest in our forties and fifties and Mm -hmm. and carrying on, you know what I mean? So, but we're just in our black, in the community, black community, we're not taught those things. It's like, everything is right now, right now, right now, The, the flashiest car, the, most expensive bag, the, the fly sh- you know what I mean? Like everything is about right now. It's not about 40, 50, 50 years from now. And I fell prey to that as well. It wasn't really until I got my new heart that I was like, oh, I'm going to be here for a while. Let me, let me start looking mm-hmm. at things differently. Because in my 20s, I was guilty of right now, right now, right now. You know what I mean? So we just, we if we can reverse that and start planning for the future as opposed to everything being right now we'd be way better off you know yeah absolutely that's true what what legacy do you want to leave behind with your son uh i just want his life to i want him to be able to experience as much as possible and most importantly is just i'm determined to set an example that he can emulate because like like we said earlier it's just mm-hmm. he's probably he doesn't he's not gonna let he's a boy he's he's a very much a boy he's getting into everything touching everything everything in his mouth and mm-hmm. i'm a test you know it's like no all i see he's not gonna listen to me he's gonna copy me so when i see him right. copying the stuff that i do i'm like okay he, he's, he's gonna be all right because all i can do is be an example you know what I mean? So that's right. the biggest legacy is just, you know, continuing to take care of myself so he understands to take care of himself. Let me keep creating opportunities and things for, for and being of service to people so he will copy the same behavior. That's all I could that's all I could really ask for. And then he's gonna grow up and hopefully continue that on and pass it on to whoever he uh brings into this world. Well, you're definitely setting a good example for him. And kudos to you. You're an awesome father and keep doing doing great things in his life. It definitely is go- it's definitely going to pay off in the long run. He's going to definitely appreciate everything that you've done for him. And I just want to just thank you again for being our special guest. It just, it's definitely been an eye opener and it definitely has blessed me to, to, to my soul. And I love your testimony. Continue to tell your testimony because it's, it's all about changing lives and, and making yourself yeah. um, better along the way which is what my platform yeah, is all about, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Thank Do you, you have any final me. thoughts? No problem. No, I was just saying okay. thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. And, um, you know, yeah, it's just, it's, it's I, the one thing I wish everybody understood about life is like you can't get it wrong. 
Like just just be willing to deal with the consequences of your choices, but you can't fail at life. You really can't because all it really is, is is making choices and then reaping the consequences of those choices. And we don't like the, the results that we're getting. We can make different choices. So we we, te- typ- uh, we technically can't get it wrong. It's like if I don't like what's happening, I can choose something else and go do that. So it's, it's not as right. complicated as we want it to be. And we've been told it is. It's just, you know, make a different choice. But thank you for having me. And I appreciate thank you it. Thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> no problem. And I want to thank everyone. Show as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I want to thank everyone who's tuned in. If you guys are interested in being a guest on the Not So Christian Me Show, please feel free to reach out to us on Instagram and Facebook at the Not So Christian Me Show. Also, feel free to sow us a seed via cash app, dollar sign, T-N-S-C-I-M. Until next time, remember that no matter what you guys are going through, God will always see you through. Stay blessed up. Bye. Peace.